life of my podcast. Today is my 100th episode and my guest for this very special episode is Soumya Reddy, member of a Legislative Assembly or MLA from Jainagar Constituency, Bangalore, Karnataka. Hi Soumya, welcome to my show. I'm honored to have you as my guest today. Hi Vidant. The pleasure is mine. I'm just so excited to finally be on your show. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, you're welcome. This is going to be really nice. Yeah, I'm really nervous. You don't need to be. Thank you. I have heard from my grandparents and parents that you are from a well-known family of political leaders. You're an animal activist, an environmentalist, and you also fight for human rights. I'm curious to know about your childhood and what led to you working on so many issues. That's a really good question, Vidan. Um, well, um, yeah, I mean, I've actually known your, uh, your parents, your grandparents since many years. In fact, your father and I grew up doing animal rights activism uh, since childhood. Well, uh, to answer your question, uh, when I was uh, probably as old as you or a little older than you when I was about 12 so there used to be this program called as Heads and Tails that is um, that was a TV show um, by Mrs. Manika Gandhi uh, you might have heard of her she is a very famous animal rights animal welfare per- person um, in our country who has done a lot of amazing work and uh, so in that show, I saw um, an animal actually being slaughtered. And in the same show, I actually saw Mrs. Amla Akinini also talk about um, starting Blue Cross of Hyderabad. And then she said how she became vegetarian at the age of 12. So, and then um, I just turned towards my mom who was sitting right next to me. And I just, I told her that, I don't want any animal to suffer cruelty just for me to have, uh, you know, dinner or so. And my mom said, OK, sure. But she, she didn't think I would actually be serious about it. And uh, so, yeah, in the next couple of years. Uh, so, well, that's when I gave up eating meat. And uh, so in the next couple of years, I would actually ask my mom about how leather is made and how silk is made. And then she actually honestly explained. And that's when I actually gave up leather and silk as well. And then there were a lot of non-profit organizations in my school as well, um, called as World Wildlife Fund, which works on wildlife. And we had, in fact, also gone to visit a lot of uh, um, animals, especially wildlife rehabilitation center. Um, And uh, so, and then, of course, in college, we started a small animal welfare, animal rights in an environmental group. And then I still very vividly remember on the probably 20, uh, on, the, on 2002, November 1st, which is World Vegan Day, I came to MG Road in Bangalore. And uh, so that's when Vegan Shake was launched by Cafe Coffee Day. And there were a lot of other animal rights, animal welfare organizations like Animal Rights Fund, PETA, uh, People for Animals, etc. And then I met a lot of like-minded people who actually um, felt, you know, um, who felt compassionate towards animals just like me. And then I went home and told my mom, mom, I met my kind of people. And uh, so, yeah, since then, I um, got in touch with, uh, I mean, I started working with various non-profit organizations like PETA um, and other animal rights, animal welfare groups with your dad and many of, uh, of my friends. And then I also went on to work with FIAPO, Federation of Animal Welfare Organizations. And uh, so, yeah, but also at the same time, I have to be also very um, thankful to my parents because they were... Um, I grew up protesting and initially they were not so supportive but later they were just really really uh, you know accepting of and respected me as an activist 
And uh, so in the next couple of years, I also got involved with environmental rights, human rights issues, uh, women's rights, um, LGBT rights. And I just felt that it's very important to speak up when, um, when there is any kind of injustice that's happening, be it human beings or non-human beings. I hope that answered your question. It did. Even, in fact, even my dad like, became, started working on animal rights and stuff like that after watching Heads and Tails. Wow, nice. I didn't know that. How do you manage your time being being an MLA and working for so many is, working on so many issues? I heard that even as a student, you were active in organizing protests and other social activities. Yeah, well, um, <clears throat> I think lately, especially since I became an elected representative, um, I feel I'm not really managing my time as well. Uh, well, you were at my office, uh, you know, a few minutes ago. So it's, um, um, you know, it's quite overwhelming because I'm responsible for, a, I don't know, two and a half, three lakh people. That's the number of people in my constituency. But I think um, 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 the reason I became um, an MLA, an elected representative, is because I felt that um, as a non-profit, working in non-profit organizations, the limit, the impact was very less. So being an elected representative and being a part of the system, I felt that I could, um, you know, push within the system as well. And uh, so, yeah, I, and be it all the, all the causes that I mentioned earlier and all the, and protesting as well, I feel that uh, it is a responsibility of each and every one of us and uh, to speak up any beat any injustice that's happening and I feel that it's my moral responsibility because in fact even now I feel like I'm an activist and not really a politician. How did it feel when you got elected to become the MLA? Was it overwhelming? Were you feeling nervous or excited? Yeah, it was very overwhelming. Um, oh gosh, <laughs> that's a really good question. Um, <clears throat> it's been almost four years since I got elected. So yes, it was extremely uh, overwhelming. And also the entire election um, campaigning, the whole process was actually quite overwhelming. And um, it was quite difficult. But um, yes, I I still very vividly remember when I, uh, during the you know when we take the oath, they call it the swearing in ceremony. I just when I was actually telling the words, I suddenly realized, oh my God, I'm responsible for two and a half lakh people, and this is the number of people in my constituency in Jayanagar. So I felt it was overwhelming. At the same time, I felt. Mm, I mean, I still feel it is a privilege and an honor um, to uh, to serve people each and every day. Um, people come in contact with me; they meet me in my office, and or they contact me through social media, talking about different issues. Be it um, you know, it could be solid waste management, be it garbage, or it could be anything. You know, be it street lights, roads, or even safety, uh, be it even crime, or even education or hospitals. Um, so I feel it's a great responsibility. And uh, so, yeah, I'm extremely thrilled and happy every single day that um, I get to do this job. You are a very popular leader doing so much of, doing so much of service. Who is your inspiration and role model? Oh, thank you so much for your kind words. That's really nice of you. Hmm. Well, um, I have, I think a lot of, uh, I have many role models. Um, like I said, I mentioned earlier in childhood, Mrs. Manika Gandhi was very inspiring. She was the person who I 
I got into activism. Uh, but yes, there were many other people as well. Mrs. Uh, Indira Gandhi, she was a prime minister of our country for many years. And she was also the first woman prime minister. And uh, she did a lot of amazing work. So back then, you know, we've got independence since about 70 plus years. Uh, back then, people were very poor. So many people, you know, <clears throat> including Mahatma Gandhi ji. And he's my, I would say, role model and inspiration every single day with what I do as well. Is because um, they, I think using violence is very easy. But using non-violence as a weapon, he unified a lot of people across the country so that a country, India, could get freedom. And uh, be it ahimsa, that is not, you know, harm any people or animals uh, is something that I still follow in my everyday, or at least I try to follow in my everyday life as well. And uh, so, yes, um, uh, and of course, my parents are also my big inspirations. Like uh, um, like you said earlier, you, yes, my dad is also a politician. He's a seven-time uh, MLA. Um, and uh, so, yes, he also, when he was a student, he started with student politics and uh, he started serving people at a very young age. And uh, so every single day when I see him meet people, interact with people, he's just so humble, so committed. So he's also an inspiration and also my mom as well. She's uh, also been the reason why um, uh, I am who I am. And that women especially, um, I mean, you must have heard of you know, gender discrimination Mm -hmm. but yeah. uh, I never faced that so right from childhood my parents always told me you can do anything you want if you put your mind to it and uh, so yeah no matter what anybody said I kept doing and you know going at it and uh, so I would say yes one of the reasons also why I'm an MLA is thanks to my parents because they were always so supportive be it um, an MLA now, or even earlier as an activist, uh, right from childhood. So, um, yeah, I would say these are a few of my inspirations. A lot of people suffered in many ways during COVID and still are. I heard that you managed to help many with food and shelter during these times. Can you tell me a little about about the challenges back then and how you tackled them? Uh, yes, unfortunately, you know, since two years, um, COVID-19 COVID is, um, you know, started and also in our country as well. It came January of last year. So they have, there was the first wave and, uh, but then the second wave that started in approximately this time last year was extremely terrible. In fact, I was admitted in the hospital as well exactly a year ago. And um, why it was such a terrible time was because um, it, it became extremely overwhelming. All the people, the symptoms were extremely, um, were, um, how do I explain, a lot of people were becoming very sick. And uh, we couldn't, people couldn't find enough hospitals, I mean, hospital beds. There weren't enough, uh, there weren't enough oxygen cylinders and they started running out of ICU beds. And pe a lot of people suddenly became sick, you know, very quickly. So it had a huge impact on the number of, you know, uh, the whole healthcare system. Uh, because the number of hospitals that was available was not enough to take care of all the people. And in fact, the medicine that you call as Ramdesivir was also not, uh, you know, <clears throat> readily available. So, yes, so last year, uh, we also made, um, you know, um, uh, there was a helpline and also about 60 volunteers, especially during the first, we started during the first wave. 
and we would help people so we had a helpline number who would people would call us in case they need any help so in case every single person who became covid positive would get a call from us from our office and we would ask them how are you feeling and uh, do you need um, a bed in the hospital do you or we would send them a covid care kit which would have medicines and oxygen meter and thermometer and masks and all of that stuff free of cost but also something that also impacted a lot was when there was a, a lockdown if you remember the lockdown oh yeah i hated that yes it was terrible because a lot of people you know during the lockdown everyone everyone was forced to stay at home but there are a lot of people who can't afford to stay at home because they have to come out and work every single day they couldn't work from home for example people who are auto drivers you know people who are daily wage you know laborers and these are all people who are extremely you know poor and uh, so this impacted them a lot because unless they come out and work that's when they would get money to go and you know um, feed their family and so we also made a lot of ration kits um, every <clears throat> and we would distribute to all the uh, underprivileged people and uh, so in that ration kit was rice and dal and oil and basic things that people can actually use for about you know 15 days so i distributed about probably 60000 across my constituency huh. yeah 60000 is a yeah. lot thank you so much and uh, so yeah i did so people also suffered a lot and a lot of um, um people couldn't find beds and so we also i also bought these oxygen concentrators and uh, distributed that to people who would need it around the clock and uh, so yeah I, these are the things that we did um especially covid and we continue to do that as well people a lot of people are also economically impacted many children couldn't go to schools and colleges because everything went online and uh, so not everybody has a smartphone on a laptop so we also try to help them out as well many parents also couldn't um afford to pay the school fees for their children because they had lost jobs or they have a lot of cut in the salary so we also try to help how much ever we can as well so that's one of the reasons why i'm trying to improve all the government schools and also the government hospitals in my constituency as much as possible oh yes of course i also we also distributed as much as possible pp kits sanitizers um uh masks um two years of course everybody including you know street vendors um hospitals every everyone as much as possible and also um <clears throat> one of the things that i also did was i felt like the government was not doing enough um especially during the second wave and uh, i started feeling very helpless so i started actually creating a lot of um you know waking trying to wake up the government through social media and try through media that you know even though the the media i mean even though uh, the government is saying no there are enough beds and icu and oxygen but the reality is it's not so we also as an mla also as an opposition so we also pushed the government to do their job properly to also create these covid care centers be it give food also give oxygen and there are also lot of people were also stuck in the city who were from other states migrant uh we call them migrant workers and they wanted to go back home and uh, so yeah we also we also pressurized the government to pay for their travel as well and uh, so yeah many people also unfortunately died um uh, from covid so uh, so we are so we asked the government to give compensation and uh, so they agreed to do that i hope the answer your question i hope i didn't to talk for too long what you what you do is so helpful i i'm 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 really glad that you helped so many people 
who were suffering during COVID-19. Thank you so much. It means a lot. Hopefully this ends soon. I hope so as well. What did you want to be as a child? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I've had a, I've actually thought of a lot of things. At one point of time, I wanted to be a doctor. And then I would see a police and I would say, I want to be a police. And then also, I, at one point of time, I also wanted to be a pizza delivery person. And then, uh, but then I think since childhood, I've realized that um, I, I couldn't keep quiet when there is any kind of injustice that's happening around me. And uh, so, yes, I think it made sense that, you know, I became an activist and ultimately an elected representative. So um, I guess um, who I am is because of all the things that I've done in the past. It's, and I'm extremely grateful for um, me as, you know, becoming this uh, animal rights activist and all the people who have had this huge impact on me. And uh, because it's just so important to speak up especially for animals, uh, for human beings, environment as well. What are your hobbies? Um, I like to, I used to like to paint, but I don't have time anymore. I used to um, also watch a lot of movies. But because of uh, the lockdown, a lot of these theatres are closed, so I still haven't gone to theater but I watch a lot of movies on Netflix shows I spend time with my friends but I love protesting <laughs> I don't know if that's my job or my hobby but it makes me happy so um, yeah I mean I don't know I guess um, organize events as well workshops I also used to run a restaurant by the way wow yeah what is it called it was, it's called Paradigm Shift. It was a vegan restaurant and an activist center. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so why <clears throat> I started that was, uh, so I went to uh, the United States uh, to do my master's. And uh, so I was there, there for three years. I really liked all the amazing vegan food I used to get over there. And... Uh, be it ice creams and all the mock meat and there was so much variety when I came back I came back to India I missed all of that and uh, so this was uh, a little more than 10 years ago so that's when and I also used to miss being a part of all these activist organizations and I realized that there is there needs to be a holistic approach and there has to be it's everything is interconnected uh, be it animal rights, be it environmental rights, human rights, women's rights, LGBT rights, also uh, the amount of consumerism and, uh, and also the impact that all of us are having on the environment. So I wanted to create a space, an activist center of sorts where people of different um, you know, walks of life different kinds of activism that I just mentioned, come and have uh, discussions, um, have workshops, panel discussions, um, documentary screenings. And uh, so, yeah, we, in fact, we had a lot of uh, workshops over there. We even had our honorary animal welfare training program over there, which your father was also a part of about um, seven, eight years ago. Um, so yeah, I do. But yeah, since I became an elected representative, it's um, it just became too much for me. So I don't, uh, you know, do that anymore. Yeah. But that must have been fun, right? <laughs> it was. It was a lot of fun running a restaurant and an activist center. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for coming on my show. Thank you, Vedant, for inviting me. You've been, you and your parents have been inviting me to be a part of this and uh, I'm really glad I could um, you know, be a part of this show and uh, I'm just actually just so inspired because you're just nine years old and I've seen you since you're a baby and 
and it's so true you've always been curious and i think as children any child needs to have that curiosity mm-hmm. you know call it critical thinking it's so important that everybody needs to question no matter what and unless you question only then you will know what's happening around us and that's when you also find out um you know what you want to do when you grow up as well and uh, you know people say oh children are the future of the country i don't agree i think you're this your citizens right now and it's just so important um that um all of you are uh, you know making use of all the amazing opportunities that you know is available to all of you i just hope and i'm sure that you will uh, do great things in the future and right now as well it's it's been an absolute pleasure being your friend and seeing you as well after more than 2 years yeah this was this is also really nice dear listeners follow my facebook page curious vedant to get updates on my upcoming episodes to listen at leisure on your phone and get notified about future episodes subscribe by searching for curious vedant wherever you get your podcasts such as apple podcasts spotify stitcher google podcasts and many more you can also listen to my show on curiousvedant.com thank you for listening to curious vedant and don't forget to read